Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat. You're watching I again, and today we're checking out the new Maze Alpha. Let's quickly get started. Well, Xiaomi is to blame for this bezel-less phenomena, where the Mi Mix was the first phone to feature a bezel-less sort of design, where the front is mostly display and lacks any bezel on three sides, and they cramped the camera and everything else at the bottom of the phone's front. Now, that phone was upwards of $500, but a lot of other Chinese smartphone makers have started to launch phones with a bezel-less sort of design. We've already checked out the Doji Mix in the past, which does have a similar design. Now, this one is the Maze Alpha. It is available in a couple of variants, one with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, whereas one with 6GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. So as far as RAM is concerned and storage is concerned, that doesn't seem to be a big problem for these manufacturers. And as far as the display is concerned, clearly they seem to be holding some sort of magic in their hands to be able to give you these sort of displays on phones that cost less than $200. So this one starts at $189 and I'll leave a link to buy it in the description below from where I got it. Now let's quickly do a one over with the device. So over at the front, you have a nice six inch display. This is a bezel-less screen, which does have Corning Gorilla Glass 4 over at the front. It is an IPS LCD display and it has a 1920 by 1080p full HD resolution. Now the touch capacitive buttons are on screen, but you do get a home button, which doubles up as a fingerprint scanner and can also be used to sort of navigate through Android. So you can hide the navigation menu. And if you double click on the home button or the fingerprint scanner, it mimics a back button. Now, right next to it is the front facing camera, which is a 5 megapixel camera and the quality is a little shoddy. I'll speak about that in just a bit. Over at the bottom of the device is the USB type C port flanked on either side by two daunting grills, one of which houses the speaker while the other houses the microphone. Over at the right is the power button and the volume rocker and over at the top is the 3.5 mm headphone jack. Over at the left is where your SIM tray is. The device will take in two SIM cards and one micro SD card up to 256 gigabyte. Now over at the back are two cameras. One is a 13 megapixel camera which is the main camera and the other is a 5 megapixel pixel camera that's only and purely for depth calculations so that that camera will never be used except to calculate the distance from your subject so that their software can run some algorithms and give you a fake blur in the background again it's shoddy at best i'll speak about that in just a bit the aperture is f2.2 and uh, the back does have an led flash and you can see that you do get a glass back panel which looks kind of nice it looks extremely premium again you get gorilla glass 4 on the front as well as the back as far as build quality is concerned the maze alpha is exquisite well made and shockingly feels premium for the price that it's available at. The sides have a full metal frame which does have a soft touch matte finish which not only looks nice but feels hefty. The phone does have a whole lot of weight to it as well weighing in at 227 grams which is quite heavy for the kind of phone it is. Also a reason that makes the phone really heavy is the 4000 milliamp hour battery inside the Maze Alpha which truly works really well and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now powering this up is a Helio P25 chipset, which is a 1.4 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz octa-core chipset, which means that four cores run at 2.5 gigahertz, whereas four cores run at 1.4 gigahertz. You also get the Mali T880 GPU. And like I said earlier, four gigabyte of RAM in this variant, but you can get a six gigabyte RAM variant as well. Now, the minute you turn on the device, you'll see that it runs Android 7.0. It does have a bunch of updates already available to download. So I've already set them up. The interface and and the update system seems to be quite similar to the Blue Boo S1 and the Doji Mix. So what I feel is that it's the same guy making these phones and selling them under different brand names or the same manufacturer selling to three different brands. So it seems to be an ODM who's also pushing out updates, who's also doing the software and everything. It seems to be quite similar amongst these guys. Now as far as performance and day-to-day -day operation is concerned, since there is zero bloatware and zero customization by the company, the operating system is really fast and responsive, a lot more than what I saw with the Doji Mix, simply because there is nothing that the company has added as far as the skinning or layering of their own softwares or any sort of customizations for themes are concerned. It's running purely Android and that definitely improves the overall experience. Because it is running Android 7, you can get split screen and uh, you also get uh, really good multitasking thanks to the split screen. Because it is a six inch display, you're able to launch the browser and play a video on the top and it works really well. Phone is capable of handling that and uh, 
I'm quite surprised at the way this phone is performing. Now, so day-to-day -day task and jumping between applications should not be a problem. It seems to manage to do that without any problem. As far as the display is concerned, it's got a nice viewing angle from all sides. It is an IPS LCD display and the front does have an 83% screen to body ratio, which looks fantastic. And if you ignore the bottom part, all you're essentially holding in your hand is the display and it looks fantastic to be quite honest. Especially if you consider the price that these phones are available at, the display is quite impressive and much better than many of the other smartphone makers that offer phones in this price bracket. The display does have a 2.5D curve on the edges, so it fuses in beautifully with the bezel or the side frame and there is no sharp edge on the display giving you a really nice feel in your hand and on your fingers. As far as the gaming performance is concerned, the Maze Alpha manages to handle all sorts of games that you would want to throw at it. It does manage to run Asphalt 8 with high graphics with little or no lag. The game does suffer some frame losses and it does not have the best touch experience as far as gaming is concerned but it's not something that is not manageable especially considering again the price of the phone and the way the display looks. Gaming experience is good thanks to this display, but it's also bad thanks to this display because of the way the display is. Every time you tap on one side of the phone, the touch capacitive keys keep getting activated. The speakerphone is loud, but it's not the best sounding. It's tinny sounding, but it is loud, so there is some sort of respite. Now, I wasn't expecting a lot from the device as far as benchmarks are concerned, scoring in at about 60,000 on Ant 2 and similarly placed results on Geekbench. But all in all, day-to-day -day performance, switching between applications, tasks, and everything can be handled by this device without any issues. Now, as far as the camera is concerned, I'm not particularly a fan of the camera, but it does manage to get some good 13 megapixel shots. You can capture 1080p video as well. It does cover up the whole screen when you're capturing photographs or video, which does look nice and it makes this phone an excellent viewfinder. You do have some modes including a face beauty mode, a blur mode which basically utilizes the second camera to give you a fake bokeh effect which you may or may not want. And then you also have a monochrome shot which also does an average job of giving you some monochrome shots. The pro mode is also not full featured, you only get your white balance, ISO and exposure compensation settings and you do get a panorama which works some Sometimes. As far as the camera results are concerned, the images are decent or above average to say the least. The front facing camera is a 5 megapixel camera and is awkwardly placed and every time you switch to the front facing camera, the phone will remind you to flip the screen around so that the camera comes back up on top and you get a better angle for your selfies. It is decently wide so you get enough in your frame but I could have liked it to be a little bit wider and you do not have a whole lot of options in the front camera as well so you can customize a little bit but no particular mode is available for the front camera. You do get a face beauty mode. You can click mono shots. Again, this is all software based and you can capture video. This video is going to be at a maximum of 480p, which is poor to say the least from the front camera. Now the phone does have a 4000 milliamp hour battery, which does last you a full day without any problems. You do get upwards of six hours of screen on time with a whole lot of calling, whole lot of internet browsing, whole lot of 4G connectivity on this phone. The phone is available in two variants. The four gigabyte variant is available for about $180 or roughly 13 to 14,000 Indian rupees. Whereas the six gigabyte RAM variant is available for 15 to 16,000 Indian rupees or roughly 220 US dollars. And at that price, this phone is quite an exception considering it has a giant six inch screen with a almost edge-to-edge -edge display with an 83% screen-to-body ratio, making it look good. It's got a great build quality and it's got decent, not the best performance, not the kind of performance that you would expect from a flagship and not the kind of performance that you would get from a name brand phone or a phone that's got a slightly better off brand. Now the company, despite all of that, is pushing updates and it is constantly sending wireless updates to the phone, which is a good indication of a software being maintained, but I don't know how far this is going to happen. The cameras are short to say the least you got poor quality video and less than average quality kind of shots so it's got a 13 megapixel camera at the back a 5 megapixel camera at the front best if you stick to images if you're going to be capturing video this phone is definitely not for you you do get a giant battery but it takes a really 
long time to charge it up with the included charger so that is also something that you need to consider the phone looks good it feels great and lasts a really long time through the day it's got stock android so that's good maybe somebody can customize it and install their own rom onto it and play around with that and that will allow you to do certain things it does have certain gestures and shortcuts that can be enabled from the settings panel and it does have a 100 mode for that six inch display but apart from that the phone remains purely bare and it gives you a bare sort of experience and it gives you a pseudo smartphone or a pseudo flagship phone sort of experience for a really budget friendly price if you guys are interested in checking out this phone i'll leave links to where i bought it from in the description below we've also checked out the doji mix you can also check that out the link to that is in the description below as well if you guys have any particular questions or queries about this phone do drop those in the comment section below this has been bharat nagpal check us out on iGan.in. catch us on facebook twitter google plus i'll see you guys in the next one